Do you need a big solar system? Do you need a lot of batteries in your teardrop camper, in your van, in your RV? Well, in this video, I'm going to explore that concept and try out the system and do some tests. And let's, let's see what, what, what we get. For this project, I'm going to incorporate a fair amount of solar power. Um, I have six of these flexible sun power panels. These are 170 watts each, and I am planning on running these in three S2Ps, which means that I'm going to end up with a system with 88.2 volts at 11.68 amps. Got uh, enough MC4 connectors here and wires to make the two parallel lines connect. To test out the system, I'm going to use a Blue Eddy solar generator. It's a 2000 watt unit with lithium iron phosphate batteries. It has a solar charge controller uh, built in, as well as a 2000 watt inverter. Another thing that's kind of neat about this, this unit here is that it can handle up to 700 watts of solar, but you can also at the same time plug in 400 watts of shore power, which means that you could charge up this unit, you could bring in at 1100 watts during ideal circumstances and charge up this unit in like two hours if you had it. So these solar panels were sent to me by a friend and patron uh, in the solar industry. He knew I was doing this project and asked if the, you know, this could be useful to me. And of course it is a, a wonderful setup. It killed it. Okay, so I'm moving away. Because these are plugged in series, if I stand in front here, create a, sh a shadow, uh, the power gets diminished severely. When these were laying down, I only got about nine to 12 watts. Uh, and then standing them up, got about 90 watts, 80, 90, uh, up to 100 watts. There's no shadow here, it's all in the bright sun. Okay, so getting about 263 to 53, that kind of range, sitting upright here, like at 80 degree angle. I haven't actually used this unit yet in terms of like cooking with it or plugging things into it. Okay, so 1056. Okay. 
41 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, and here you have all the individual cells in the battery. So um, down to 92%. Um, today is not really sunny, but it is snowy and bright outside. So let's plug in a panel and see uh, if we're getting any, uh, any power. So I'm getting about between 6 and 12 watts in. So this is 170 watt panels. We have six of them. I would get 60 watts right now. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean, it's not sunny. It's cloudy. Six twelve. Not bad. The other thing I'm realizing just if you have a couple of leaves on here, you know, it, it brings it down dramatically as well. So we got a little makeshift campsite test here. This is going to be the first time that I ever have the power coming in from the solar at the same time as I'm using it for something. And I'm going to use the Instapot to do the cooking, just kind of like you might if you're out camping. Four hundred watts of solar. One thousand one hundred and seventy-six. We're getting four thirty-nine on solar. Oh, hard to see. Ah. 444. So we're back into the 400s. We had a cloud, it went down to 40. <laughs> the cloud went away, we're back into 400 something. So it says we have 48% power now on the battery. 48% as it's being funneled in and being funneled out at the same time. It has to pass through charging. <sighs> Sausagey, cabbagey. Beer, beery. Mm. 277 watts right now. It is three o'clock in the afternoon, so it's just gonna, you know, get less and less. But if you think about it, okay, let's say you're out camping right now. Currently, I have 54% charge here. Honestly, you're not gonna get that much more, even if you keep these out for a while. Then you have to kind of be a little bit careful. Okay, what are you gonna wanna do tonight? Well, you may want to make some coffee later. Um, you're going to need to charge up your laptop, perhaps. This is, you know, of course, without any heat. And then you need to think about tomorrow morning. Let's say you get up, you want to make some tea, you want to make some breakfast. I mean, power goes rather quickly when you start thinking like that. To only have 55% in the evening, it's really not that great. Like a thousand watts. Simulated camping experience number two. Getting 211. Grilled cheese sandwich. So by turning on the induction cooktop using 1200 watts. 17, 14 watts. So uh, 120 watts in exchange for a sandwich. <laughs> what do you think about it? So when the, the induction cooktop was using it, it used about 1700 watts per hour. But of course it doesn't take an hour to make a grilled cheese sandwich. In total it used 120 watts 
because it only took a couple of minutes. Um, but that's also because an induction cooktop is really efficient. It's only transmitting, like it's only using the heat that's actually being transmitted into the pan. So right now it's kind of hazy outside. Um, so it would take about 30 minutes with this setup to recoup my sandwich in terms of the energy coming in through the solar into the Blue Eddy. Of course, it was, if it was sunnier, that would like be really, really fast. After the sandwich, I kind of feel like having hot chocolate. So I'm going to bring out another appliance that is not really standard for basic <laughs> camping, but I'm going to take out my Keurig and plug that in. For the Keurig used, it uses like 1200 watts an hour. If you divide that by 60, you get 20 watts a minute. And to make these two cups took about four minutes. So that's about 80 watts in terms of power for, for the hot chocolate. So currently the Blue Eddy says we're at 92%. It was completely charged when I started using it. So in that case used 8% of, of 2000 watts. So in total lunch costs 160-ish watts for sandwich and hot chocolate. <laughs> okay, so the key feature here really though is that there, there is a 2000 watt inverter inside the Blue Eddy which allow you to you know, have these high draw appliances. Whereas if that wasn't there, you wouldn't be able to you know, use these, use a Keurig, use an induction cooktop. So even though we only used like 160 watt in power, you still needed that 2000 watt inverter in order to access that power. So it's like a little deceiving, depending on how you look at it. Eventually, I am going to build an awning with this. When it's folded up, it's going to show two panels. And then when you fold it all out, it's going to show all six panels. So it will constantly have two panels on the roof. And when you are parked and set up, it will have six panels funneling in to the battery bank. Um, and I am going to get a, a bigger battery bank because while 2000 watts is really nice, I want an integrated system um, and I'm going to get um, a larger system, almost twice the size of this. Because I'm realizing like wireless is very nice and I love that the fact of this is that it's so mobile. You can move it from vehicle to vehicle. That's really nice um, if that's what you're looking for. Doing these tests here though. Um, it has made me realize a couple of things about solar panels. It's different when you first, when you get your hands on solar panels and you can kind of use them in real terms. Um, one of the things I realized is that the angle of the panels really matters. Um, I mean, when I'm doing tests, if I have them straight, especially later in the afternoon or whatever, I'm not getting nearly as much if they're like that as opposed to if I prop them up. Um, and the fact that the sun, of course, is moving a lot. So you, if you really want optimal solar, you need to be on top of that and move those, those things around um, often. Um, and of course, it's hard to, uh, to find spots that uh, are completely sunny unless you're out in the wide open, I don't know, the desert or there's no trees or anywhere because sooner or later, there's going to be some tree coming through with a shade. Very few spots are like sunny, you know, throughout the day as the sun moves around. The other thing is just kind of how many panels you really need. Like two of these panels wouldn't be nearly enough uh, in order to charge up like a large system where you're funneling a lot of energy back into those batteries all the time. So you need a lot of battery just because you can't trust that you're gonna get like what the maximum capability is very often, like if ever. Uh, so you want to be able to take that window of two hours during that day when conditions are okay and just like grab as much power as you possibly can during those those few hours which might not even happen every day so when it does happen you need to be able to like you need a, a large enough system so you can grab as much as you possibly can during that you know precious little time when the sun is shining and there's no shade which means that you need a larger system than you think you're gonna need I think that's about it. Thanks for watching guys. Yeah, anyway, okay.